Welcome to this brief overview of the California Wildfire Fund. This is your host, Jason Shoup, founder and managing member of the Centers for Better Insurance. There are many aspects of California's 2019 wildfire legislation that created the Wildfire Fund. In this short video, we are going to take a high-level view of three major themes. First, how the Wildfire Fund is funded. Second, how the Wildfire Fund encourages wildfire risk mitigation or risk reduction. And finally, how claims are paid out under the Wildfire Fund. The fund is an important part of California's overall response to the wildfire risk. However, it is only a part. Specifically, the fund relates to fires caused by the electrical transmission lines or equipment operated by three investor-owned utilities. Wildfires not caused by electric transmission lines or equipment and wildfires caused by any other utilities, such as regional utilities or cooperatives, are out of scope of the wildfire fund. The California Catastrophe Response Council consists of the California Governor, Treasurer, Insurance Commissioner, Secretary of the Natural Resources Agency, and five appointed members of the public. Among other duties, the council appoints the administrator of the California Wildfire Fund. Right now, the California Earthquake Authority is serving as fund administrator. Importantly, the CEA and the Wildfire Fund are entirely separate programs. Basically, the Wildfire Fund is leveraging off of the staff and administrative capabilities of the CEA. Otherwise, there is no connection between the two programs. The Wildfire Fund has two main sources for its $21 billion funding. First, the three electric utilities that participate in the fund have already contributed an initial $7.5 billion payment and will pay an additional combined $300 million for each of the next 10 years, bringing their total contributions to $10.5 billion. Ratepayers meaning customers of the three electrical utilities, will pay $900 million a year for 15 years, which will probably turn out to be something in excess of an additional $10.5 billion. Let's turn to some of the ways the California wildfire legislation tries to reduce the risk and severity of wildfires. The Public Utilities Commission currently houses the Wildfire Safety Division. In mid-2021, that unit will move over to the Natural Resources Agency and become known as the Office of Energy Infrastructure Safety. Electrical utilities, including the three major investor-owned companies, must develop wildfire mitigation plans for approval by the Wildfire Safety Division. These plans include a combined total of $5 billion in investments into wildfire risk mitigation that will not be passed on to ratepayers. The Wildfire Safety Division will issue certificates of safety to any of the three major investor-owned utilities that has an approved wildfire management plan, has established a culture of wildfire safety in the organization, leads the organization's wildfire safety strategy from the board of directors, and links executive compensation to wildfire safety. CAL FIRE is responsible to determine the cause of a wildfire. If it determines the electrical transmission wires or equipment operated by one of the three major investor-owned utilities caused the fire, the wildfire fund becomes available. After satisfying a $1 billion annual deductible, the utility can request the California Wildfire Fund to approve and pay its settlements with third parties who had suffered damages because of the wildfire. Settlements include subrogation claims from homeowners insurance companies that have paid their policyholders. 
The program makes it difficult for insurers to recover more than 40 cents on the dollar for these claims. After the utility has settled out all of its claims, the utility must petition the Public Utilities Commission for a finding that it had acted prudently with respect to the cause of the wildfire. If the utility had a certificate of safety in effect at the time the fire started, the utility is presumed to have acted prudently, although that presumption can be rebutted with evidence. If the Public Utilities Commission finds that the utility did not act prudently, the utility must reimburse the wildfire fund subject to a cap. That cap does not apply if the utility failed to have a valid certificate of safety in effect. You can learn more about the California Wildfire Fund at www.betterins.com. Org. On behalf of the Centers for Better Insurance, thank you for spending this time with us.